Hi guys, welcome back to the channel, this is Scott K. When I first started getting into the custom keyboard hobby, I had a love and hate relationship with this one specific component, switches. I love the fact that there were so many options and each switch had a different characteristic in terms of sound and feel. Then I realized to get the most out of these, you had to lube and film them for hours. As you jump into this tedious task, you discover there are just so many different types of lube and methods and brushes and film and the list just goes on and on. But the end result, it was so worth it. Listen to the difference between a stock switch versus a lubed and filmed one. There are various lubes and tools you can use, so I'll be pointing out what I use for each specific switch type. Today, I'll be lubing four types of popular switches, starting with the tactile switch, then moving on to the linear switch, a silent type switch, and finally the box variant, which is very unique in terms of structure and requires a different lubing method. Let's get started with the ever popular tactile switch. For tactile switches, I prefer to use Crytox 204, which is less viscous than its 205 grade 0 sibling. For the brush, I go with the thinner one, typically size 0 or double 0 for better control around surfaces that you want to avoid, like the stem legs. Start by opening up the switch. When you're preparing to open hundreds of switches, it's always good to have a reliable switch opener. The one I'm using is the aluminum version from KBD Fans. Once you separate the top housing from the bottom, lift up and remove the top to expose the stem and the spray inside. For these MX style switches, I typically don't do much with the top housing. With the top housing removed, you can now separate the stem and spring from the bottom housing. The first component to start lubing is the bottom housing. This is an important area to focus on because it's the foundation for the entire switch. Since this is a tactile switch, I'm going to go with the Crytox 204. You start by taking a small seed sized amount of lube on your brush. It should look like this. I like to use the top lid of the lube jar to spread the lube evenly onto the brush. It helps you to not load it too much. The rule of thumb is that less is more. You don't want to see any white lumps of lube on your brush. A nice even coat of lube is sufficient and your brush should look shiny without looking white. We're going to start by taking your brush and swiping it across the slider once. Then, we will move on to the other slider and with the opposite side of the brush, swipe across it once. This is to evenly distribute the lube. Then I take the brush and swipe three times for each slider to coat it evenly with the lube. Make sure you get the center and the little sides. Finally, I take the brush and wrap around the center pole where it holds the spring. I do not lube the actual hole itself. If you get too much lube in the hole, you get a squishy sounding switch. Now once again, load up your brush with more lube. Use the lid to evenly distribute the lube onto your brush. 
If you get too much on your brush, use the edge of the lid to scrape some off. Now we move onto the stem. You can lube the stem by holding onto the end with your fingers like this. If you have a prong tool, it really helps to hold the stem snug and stable during this process. If you don't have a prong tool, you can also use your trusty curved tweezer as well. I'll provide the links to these tools in the description below. Since I do have a prong tool, let's use it for this demonstration. We're going to start by taking your brush and swiping the stem slider twice on one side, then twice on the other side with the opposite side of the brush. Then we swipe the back side once, and finally, the front side once, careful not to touch the stem legs. Then go back to the slider and evenly distribute the lube to eliminate the clumps and create a thin film of lube. Now repeat this for the other slider. Also evenly distribute the lube for the back side of the stem. Remember to get the skinny extensions on the bottom as well. Finally, lube the front of the slider. But since this is a tactile switch, I'm avoiding lubing the legs to maximize the tactility. This is entirely up to you, but the only tactile switch that I lube the legs is for the Glorious Panda, and that's for another reason that I point out in a separate video. Now you're done with the stem. Now time for the spring. Use your angled tweezer to help hold on to the spring. The idea is to use a little bit of lube and coat the ends of the spring to avoid ping. I typically don't add any more lube because I feel there's enough already left on the brush to accomplish this task. Then with the leftover lube, swipe your brush a few times along the side to evenly distribute on the spring. Once complete, Grab your lubed lower housing. Then gently place the spring onto the pole. If you plan to film the switch, which I strongly recommend for most switches, this is the time to do so. Once again, an angled tweezer comes in real handy to help you place the film onto the lower housing of the switch. Now take your stem and gently insert it onto the spring. Finally, take the top housing and carefully snap everything into place. Careful not to pinch the film in the process. There you have it, a lubed and filmed tactile switch. Press it a few times to ensure proper operation. Now we move on to the linear switch. For linears, we'll be using the Crytox Tool 5 Grade 0. Similar to the tactile switch, take your trusty switch opener and start by opening up your switch. Once you have the top and bottom housing separated, gently lift up the top to expose the stem as well as the spring. Once again, we're not doing too much with the top housing. Remove the stem and the spring from the lower housing. You'll notice that the bottom housings of most linears and tactiles are very similar. For linear switches, I typically use the Crytox 205 Grade Zero. It's a little bit more viscous than the Tool 4 that I typically use for tactiles. And for brushes, I use a thicker brush, typically size 3 or 4, because I don't have to be as careful not to avoid the um, stem legs in this situation. Similar to what you have done before, take a dollop of lube and use the top of the lid to evenly spread and load up your brush with the lube. 
Once done properly, you shouldn't be able to see any white lube on your brush. Once again, we start with the lower housing. Similar to before, I take one side of the brush and I swipe up on one slider. Then I turn it the other side and swipe up once more on the other slider. Then similar to the tactile, I go a couple different times across the slider to evenly distribute the lube. What's different between a linear and a tactile is that for linear, I actually lube the legs of the leaf as well. This is for that maximum smoothness. Finally, similarly, I take the remaining lube and I rub it around the, the pole in the center. And once again, I actually don't lube the center hole because sometimes that creates a very squishy sounding switch. Now we move on to the stem. Once again, I'm going to use a prong holder because it just makes the overall process just so much easier. Now we gotta re-up on the loop. Take a little bit on your brush like this, and once again, use the top lid to help you evenly distribute. If you have a little too much, use the edge to scrape it off. Overall, when you do it right, you should see a light sheen without seeing too much lube actually on the brush itself. Take your loaded brush, take one swipe on one slider. Then use the opposite side of the brush and another swipe on the opposite slider. Then one swipe across the front, one swipe across the back. Now you take your brush and evenly distribute the loop all over the place. Now this is a linear switch, so don't be afraid to get the loop on the slider, the stem legs. You actually want it on the stem legs to improve the overall smoothness of the switch. Finally, finish it off with the back side of the stem, evenly distributing the loop, making sure to get the little extensions on the bottom as well. Now the stem is complete. Finally, the process with the spring is very similar to what you have done already for the tactile. Use your trusty angled tweezer like this, and then get some lube, apply it to the ends, and then along the entire length of the spring to get a nice even coating. You don't have to have too much lube here, it's just enough so that you could eliminate the ping that you typically get from springs. This process is fine for individual switches like this, but when you're doing mass hundreds of switches, I have another method that really helps to speed up this process. And I'm gonna cover that at the end of all this after we pass all the different switch lubing tutorials. Now take your lube bottom housing, take your spring and gently place it on the center pole. If you're planning to film your switch, which I strongly recommend, this is the time to do so. Take your trusty angle tweezer and gently place your film onto the lower housing. Finally, gently place your stem onto the spring like so. And finally, you get your top housing and gently place it over and snap the whole entire thing back into place. There you have it. You have a filmed and lubed linear switch. Press it a few times to make sure it's operating properly. Now we move on to the silent switch. This is a tactile variant, so I'm going to be using the Crytox 204. Same process here. You take your switch opener, take your switch, and you separate the top and bottom housing by pressing it down. Once you have the two separated, gently pry the top housing off the bottom housing, and you expose the stem and the spring. We're not doing too much with the top housing once again. What's a little different now with the silent variant of switches is that you'll notice this little rubber pad on the top of the slider and also on the bottom of the slider that helps to cushion out the bottom out and the top out so it really helps to overall make it more silent and feel a little bit more gentle. As before we're going to start by lubing the bottom housing. 
By now you probably realize that bottom housings for most of these switches are very similar. For the brush, I'm going to be using a double zero this time. I'll explain why in a little bit. Take some Crytox Tool 4, and similar to what you have done before, take a little bit, a seed-sized dollop of lube, and use the top lid to evenly distribute it into your brush. In this situation, your brush looks white, so you have a little too much lube here. So when you do have that situation, then use the edge of the lid to scrape some off. Now you're good to go. The process of lubing the lower housing is actually the same. One swipe along one slider, another swipe along the other slider, and then three times on one side, three times on the other side. Make sure you get the center, the left, and the right. Then with the remaining lube, gently go around the center pole. You're good to go. Now for the stem. This is where things get interesting with a silent type switch. So once again, you put the stem on the prong holder like this. up on your lube. Very similar process. Take a little bit of lube, use the top of the lid, and evenly distribute it through your brush. Nice sheen on it without seeing big clumps of white. Now this is where the double zero comes into play. Similar to what you have done, you take one little swipe on one slider, Another swipe on, a, on the other slider, one side on the back, and one time in the front. With silent type switches, you want to be careful not to apply too much lube on the actual little rubber pads. The reason being is that when you get too much lube on the pads, you end up getting a very squishy sounding, um, squeaky sounding switch. And sometimes um, it also causes the switch to stick depending on which brand it is. So I usually use a double zero brush like this and then I try to avoid the rubber areas as much as possible. And then also since this is a tactile switch right here, I also avoid the stem legs to maximize the overall tactility. But overall, the rest of the process is very similar. Just make sure that you get a nice even distribution of lube along the entire stem like this. You don't want any white clumps of lube anywhere. At the end of the day, you want to see a nice sheen without seeing any white. You just completed the most difficult part of lubing a silent switch, the stem. The spring is very similar. Once again, you use your angle tweezer, get a little bit of lube. I'm re-upping on the lube on the, in this situation because the double zero, it's really thin and there's not a lot of lube that stays on. So get some lube on the end of the spring and alongside the spring length and you'll be good to go. Now grab your lube lower housing, gently place your spring into the center pole. Same spiel again, if you're going to film the switch, which I strongly recommend, this is the time to do so. Now take your lubed stem and place it onto the spring. Finally, you take your top housing and you snap everything back into place again. Now you have a lube and filmed silent switch. Now for the box switch. The box switch is very interesting and for this, I recommend Crytox Tool 5. I'll explain in a little bit why. But overall the process is very similar. Take your switch opener, 
This time you're going to use the opposite side, the kale switch opener side. Obviously you can see that the switch itself is very different. This is kind of a pain here because uh, in my opinion the kale box switches actually don't open up as easily as a cherry style four prongs. But open up the switch, separate the top housing from the bottom. In, in, immediately you can see the difference between the overall construction. For box switches, you're actually going to be focusing on the top housing. You can see right here the bottom housing, the spring, and the stem assembly. The stem is just so different. It's a giant box, hence called a box switch. Spring is a little bit different, um, it's a tiny bit skinnier and longer. And this housing here, on the bottom housing here, is actually where the biggest difference is as well. You don't have a leaf per se, you have this little green switch. This is actually the actuator for the box switch. And you'll also notice this little slot. The box switches are actually water resistant or liquid resistant and it's designed to just have the liquid flow out of the slot. It causes a problem for lubing because guess what happens to the lube? It eventually oozes out of that slot as well. That's the reason why I recommend a thicker type of lube like Crytox 205. We start by taking the top housing in this situation and this is where we're going to be putting a lot of focus. As you can see, the shape is so different. And you'll also notice the overall slider um, carrier is actually built into the top housing instead of the lower housing as you see with other typical cherry switches. Similar um, in terms of lube, you take a little bit of 205 grade zero this time. I'm going to be using a thicker uh, number three or four brush that I use for the linear switch because this is actually also a linear switch as well. Same process here. Take some lube, use the top lid to evenly distribute. If you have a little too much, scrape it all along the edge. You're looking for that nice little sheen without seeing just gl like globs of lube. As mentioned before, the slider carrier is actually on the top housing for this switch. So you're going to take your brush, swipe alongside one slider carrier, swipe alongside the other. You're going to swipe alongside the front and the two little pegs on the back. Now take your loop and just evenly distribute along the slider carriers like this three times on one side and once again three times along the other down the center and left and right then evenly coat the other surfaces like this. Now you're good to go. Now it's time to lube the stem. You notice that the stem is actually so different from the typical cherry switch. A lot more surface on here. And in this situation, the prong holder won't work. So I use my trusty angled tweezer like this. Then take some Crytox 205, load up your brush, and what I'm going to do is go alongside one slider, then the other. once alongside this lumpy surface and finally the flat surface as to evenly distribute the lube then as you have done with the other switches evenly coat the surface sliding starting with the first slider moving on to the other slider <laughs> 
than the rear flat surface. And then the front bumpy surface. There you have it. You have a lubed box stem. Like the other switches, once done properly, you'll notice that you get a nice little sheen on the surface. You're not going to see huge clumps of lube anywhere on this actual stem. Now for the bottom housing. We don't do too much with this other than just taking a little bit of leftover lube on your brush and then going around the center pole. Finally, you take your lubed lower housing, then you take your spring. Similar uh, method here, take some lube, lube up the ends of the spring, and then finally go along the side of the spring just to evenly distribute the, the spring itself so that you could eliminate the ping. Now gently place the spring onto the center pole. In this situation, for box switches, there are no film for it, but overall these kale box switches are pretty tight to start with. Take your stem, place it onto the spring like that, then you take your top housing and you'll notice that everything's lubed nice. I struggled a little bit here, but you basically line up the box to the opening, like so, then you snap everything back together. Now you have a lubed, not filmed, box switch. We just learned how to lube four different types of switches, starting with a tactile, then a linear, then a silent, and finally, that weird and quirky box. As mentioned before, if you're gonna do multiple switches at once, a lube station and also a switch opener is really, really helpful. If you're preparing a large batch of switches, I strongly recommend using the bag method to save time. I used to use Crytox 105 for this, but I didn't notice much difference between this and the Super Loop Oil, and Super Loop Oil is much cheaper. Open up your Super Loop, and then your bag. The rule of thumb I use here is about one drop of oil per 10 springs. I have about 90 springs in this bag, so I use about nine drops of oil in total. Now you close up your bag, except for the little end. Squeeze the end open, and now you blow some air into this. This helps to evenly distribute the oil and helps in this shaking process here. Just keep shaking the bag and just distribute the oil all over the place and make sure your spring is completely covered evenly as possible. This takes a little bit of time, but it's actually much easier to just bag lube it like this versus individually lubing each and every spring. And the end result is pretty much the same. There you have it. You pretty much just saved yourself at least 30 minutes to an hour. I hope this tutorial helps you achieve that perfectly lubed switch. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe and I'll have more content for you in the future. You're probably wondering, Lubing makes the switch smoother, but what kind of impact does it have on sound? For that, I have here three of the same switches, but one that is stock, one that is lubed, and the other one that is lubed and filmed. Let's do a quick sound comparison. Now we're going to have the same comparison with caps, G, H, and J. You're going to have stock, lubed, lubed, and filmed.
Finally, let's finish this off with a sound test video. Thanks.